Long time no see. Yeah, I got your response that you like these uh, video responses. I've been trying to do more for you, and this is kind of I'm do, I'm trying to clear my backlog. I ended up having a lot of work to do uh, in October, November, and it really sort of set me behind. And so I'm just now getting to clear the backlog on things. And you're on the list here, and it's uh, your video that you uh, had uh, uh, things I suck at, and you asked, well. What do I suck at? And uh, so, as I said, this video is a video response for uh, Brittany at Brittle Productions. I like her videos a lot. She's, uh, you know, a very good videographer. If you like vlogs and sitting down and talking like a virtual visit, uh, Brittany's the place to go. And, uh, you know, yeah, that's Brittle Productions there on, on YouTube. Anyways, the things I suck at. I suck at many things. As a matter of fact, uh, when they, so people talk about self-esteem, and uh, confidence and so on and so forth. I don't actually have any of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was never sort of... I, I, I'm, I was never the person that was able to do things easily. Anything I wanted or, or wanted to do, I had to work at. And that's no exception. So it, it's not that I sit down and I'm a natural at it and ooh, here you go. Everything I want to do, I have to work at. Anything I want to do, uh, and if I want to do something, I have to realize, and this is where I get in my mind, that I'm going to suck at it at first, but, construction. Yeah, sorry about that, Brittany. Hey, yeah, I to say, um, I don't really have any self-esteem, I don't have confidence in myself, and what I've done, I realized, is that I don't, uh, I don't set expectations to myself either. It's sort of a bizarre contradiction is that I'm a person uh, uh, who hasn't set lofty goals for himself. I just kind of move along in life. And because people more or less view me as invisible, uh, even in the crowd, if I'm with a group of people, no matter how many friends I've had or been within groups of people, they always kind of forget that I'm there. So I'm always in the crowd or with a group of friends. I'm always the invisible person. It doesn't matter what group I'm with. Uh, I'm always, I always end up being the invisible person. And they even forget that I'm there. They leave me behind sometimes. <laughs> the whole bit. And because I realize I'm not that, that type of person who is not expected to do much of anything in life, this has sort of been the view people have had of me. And that's because in many cases, um, Earlier on in life, even though I'm a professor now and I'm a, science, a research scientist in natural astrophysics, in natural physics, uh, earlier on in elementary school, I was in special ed, and that's just because I just it wasn't that I wasn't smart. I just didn't fit in with what the standard school wanted me to do, and I didn't fit in with the standard student. And so, because I was different, I was shoved off into the special class. And this sort of set the tone for things where people didn't expect me to do much of anything. And they got to a certain point where they didn't expect me to do anything at all. And when the expect expectations for me, the pressure for me to do something dropped off, it was a bizarre contradiction because all of a sudden now I was free to do whatever I wanted to do. And that's kind of how I picked up. Is that if I was free to do anything I want to do and don't have to worry what people think of me, because no one followed me anyways. There was no sort of pressure. Daniel, you need to do this, what, you know, this and this and this. Uh, I was free to do whatever I want, at, at whatever the consequence. And t you know, in ter not in terms of bad consequence, but in terms of, you know, uh, failure for many people aren't a, is an option because... Construction again. As I said, for many people, failure isn't an option because they have people who will tell them, Oh, you shouldn't fail, Dusty, you shouldn't fail. And then they were worried about what other people think if they fail. For myself, that never really was an issue, so uh, I could fail at things, and then if I failed at something, figure out what I did wrong, and then try again, and 
try not to do that, that mistake again. You know, in other words, you learn from your errors. That's sort of the way I came up with things. And this has sort of led me to the, the uh, exploration part of my research, where because I didn't have that hindrance or that baggage uh, that weighed me down of failure, I could more or less do whatever I wanted to do. And this is where uh, much of my success has come from. It's come from the position that uh, it didn't matter if I failed. It didn't matter what people thought of me. I just sort of moved along anyways. And I'm sort of still in that mode. It's not an issue of self-esteem or uh, what I'm good at or what I suck at, what I don't suck at. You know, it, that's no longer an issue. It's, it, I know in the beginning if I'm going to do something that I'm going to suck at it. And it's only through, you know, plunging through um, the difficulties that at some point in time I'll get better, not necessarily good, but I'll get better at what I want to do um, sometime in the future. And that doesn't bother me that it's some time out. It basically turns me into uh, an infant student, an internal student, uh, or, or a professional student. So that's where my life is right now. So, you know, <laughs> that's my approach to things. Anyways, it was nice talking to you. I hope to do uh, more of these uh, Brittle Talk uh, video responses. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. All right, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.